What is it like walking in to the meet the president of the United States, regardless of who he is, walking in, you know, from, from, a, from a boy growing up in Lawton, Oklahoma, yeah. and the journey that we've just talked about that you've gone through being a person of influence and whatever it is and going and Cameron and OCU and JC Watts and everything and being the speaker and then you are walking through the door and the president of the United States is the other side of that door. Yeah. Take me to that feeling. Yeah. It's... Um it's a humbling experience mm-hmm. and you do and, and so one of the things I've tried to do most of my life and I and I think I've done pretty well is to try to be in the moment yeah. right to, to, to be present like and to actually take in what it means mm-hmm. and to and to feel it and, and to own it and so yeah. Um, in those moments, the things that I'm thinking about, and because I've had a chance, I had met President uh, George W. Bush mm-hmm. before, uh, so I've, I've met two sitting presidents before, and, mm-hmm. and, and but I've met a lot of other elected officials. Uh, the things that, it is humbling when you're meeting with the leader of the free world. I mean, right. you do recognize what that means, but it's also a reminder of, man, people are people. Right? Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, we're all created in the image of God. And I think that's, when I, when I think about our society and the challenges we have, and you know, there's so much about equality and equity and inequality and mm-hmm. inequity. And, and, and I think we should work, work on making sure that people are valued for who they are and about the content of their character, right. not the color of their skin. However, I think there's only one place where every single person is equal mm-hmm. among themselves. And that's in the presence of God. And I think when you remove a higher being, your, your God out of your society, yeah. that's when people start creating these goofy, you know, fiefdoms and these goofy hierarchies. And so walking in to meet, you know, President Donald Trump, knowing that you're interviewing for a job, you just don't know what to expect because— right. This is a guy that I've known of my entire life. So this is different than other presidents that kind of, you know, they kind of emerge and you kind of get to know them over 18 months. I've known of him my entire life. I remember him being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey and being on the Phil Donahue show. Now I'm really dating myself. So you you at least you you at least know of him. Um, And so I walk in and and when we're there, because we're all being interviewed and uh, Chris Christie's there. Bob Johnson, the first African American male, billionaires there. Um, who else is in the room? There, there, there's some other. Um, Mayor Giuliani is in the room. They're all. We're all kind of in the yeah. in the line, and you're like, "What the heck am I doing here?" <laughs> like, like, come on. Uh, but you know, you try to look dignified, yeah, of and, course. You know, yeah, and, yeah. And, and look as if you belong. And yeah. and I've certainly looked that part before, or tried to look that part before. And so, th- when we walk mm-hmm. in, you had to walk. They told us that there would be a a press opportunity. So we, yeah. we're at we're at Trump's place in New Jersey. Um, the and, and so we walk by the press, and he said, "When you get up there, the president's going to want to stop mm-hmm. before you walk in because we're outside. You're walking outside, and it's cold." And yeah. he said, "He's going to want to stop there for the press opportunity." And so we did. And uh, when I shake his hand, you know, you're, you're a little bit starstruck because you know he, he, right. he he's, you've just seen this face all the time. And the first thing he says is, "You're taller than I thought. You're taller than me." And I said, "Well, let me fix that, Mr. President." And I stepped down on a step because yeah. we we're walking up these steps to get to the house. And we turned to the camera, and he said, "Boy, you really are good," you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, because yeah. I think I have about—he's a tall guy too. Yeah. And I think I have about an inch or a half an right. inch on him. And, uh, he, and so, in the picture, though, he looks like the tall guy for sure. Uh, but then we walk in, and there's this uh, meeting. Now I know Ryan's Priebus. That Ryan's mm-hmm. is a friend of mine. I'd known him for years. That's mm-hmm. who called me to interview with the president. That said, we think we could use your talents. And yeah. he, the president of the United States wants to meet the president elect. He yeah. wasn't sworn in yet as president, but he had been elected. Um, so I walk in. Ryan's is there, and sitting behind the president was a was a gentleman, a young gentleman. And I thought, well, it must be an intern, or mm-hmm. you know. But he was sitting kind of behind him. Kind of almost in the shadows, almost yeah. kind of taking notes. And later on, I find out it's Jared Kushner because I didn't know who Jared Kushner right. was at the time. Uh, so we had a great interview. I pick, figured out very quickly 
He's a very fast-paced guy. He makes you feel like the most important person in the room. I mean, he's totally listening, and he's totally... You can tell he's evaluating very, very quickly about your ability. And I probably blew the interview a little bit. Ryan's didn't tell me exactly what I was being interviewed for. He said, he wants to talk to you about a cabinet position. I was like, well, which one? And uh, he said, well, we'll we'll see. We don't know yet. He said, but before I walked in, he said, well, would you consider housing and urban development? And I thought... Well, yeah, but in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm from Oklahoma Oil and Gas State. Right. Yeah. I'm an enrolled tribal member, a, a state with tribal presence. I thought yeah. Interior made sense. So uh-huh. when they asked me about, I probably blew the interview, as a matter of fact, because yeah. when he asked me about, the president said, well, uh, what's your philosophy on HUD? And I said, well, you know, funny you ask, I, I believe getting people, moving people from generational poverty in the middle class is the most important thing we can do yeah. uh, because it changes people's lives. I said, however... Being from an oil and gas state with a high presence of Native Americans, mm-hmm. I really think Interior has a lot of um, a lot of uh, influence on people's lives. To you know, keep yeah. an energy cost low, blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. So anyway, um, it was an amazing experience. So when you first get there, you know, at first I told my wife before I left, I said, you know, just being called, oh yeah, is like Having that an phone amazing. Call. Yeah, yeah. So first it's that I said then, and then it was well. I think I'll, then I call her. I said, you know, anything they offer, I'd just be yeah. honored to serve. It doesn't matter. Right. I said, but it quickly, your ego kicks in a little bit. And it's because then I was thinking, you know, I could probably do Mike Pence's job. I'd make a pretty good <laughs> VP, actually. So, you know, it, it yeah, escalated yeah, yeah. very, very quickly. But I would, at the end of the day, it was just amazing to be honored and, yeah. um, and got to meet a lot of amazing people. And every now and then I would get calls from kind of people in the circle about what do you think about this? And I felt yeah. like I felt like I had a voice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. special.